Hello, friends. It's good to see you virtually. If you are joining us for the first time today, I'm Hannah. And on Thursdays at 12 at 5 p.m., we observe a noonday prayer with special celebration of the saints. Um, today, our saint is Harriet Star Cannon, for those who like to follow along. We use the Book of Common Prayer. Um, if you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, you can follow along with us, or um, you can go to bcponline.org to follow along, and we will begin in just a moment on page 103. Let everybody get ready. Okay, we begin on page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 131. It's a short one. It's on page 785 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 131 on page 785. We'll read it together. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matter or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Keep loving each other like family. Do not neglect to open up your home to guests, because in doing so, some have been hosts to angels without knowing it. Remember prisoners as if you were in prison with them, and people who are mistreated as if you were in their place. Marriage must be honored in every respect, with no cheating in relationship, because God will judge the sexually immoral and the person who commits adultery. Your wife should be free from the love of money, and you should be content with what you have. After all, he has said, I will never leave you or abandon you. This is why we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's word to you. Imitate their faith as you consider the way their lives turned out. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be misled by the many strange teachings out there. It is a good thing for the heart to be strengthened by grace rather than by food. Food does not help those who live in this context. We have an altar, and those who serve as priests in the meeting tent do not have the right to eat from it. The blood of the animals is carried into the Holy of Holies by the high priest as an offering for sin, and their bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also outside the city gate to make the people holy with his own blood. So now let us go to him outside the camp, bearing his shame. We do not have a permanent city here, but rather we are looking for the city that is still to come. So let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise through him, which is the fruit of our lips that confess his name. Do not forget to do good and to share what you have, because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, so as I mentioned, our saint today is 
Harriet Star Cannon. Uh, her feast day is actually the 5th. Um, and I've transferred it to today. Um, so I will read to you a little bit about her now. Harriet Star Cannon was one of the founding sisters and first superior of the community of St. Mary, the first religious order for women formally recognized in the Episcopal Church. Harriet was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1823 and was orphaned in 1824 when her parents died of yellow fever. She grew up with her sister, her only surviving sibling, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Following the death of her sister, Harriet entered the Sisterhood of the Holy Communion, an order founded by William Augustus Muhlenberg, rector of the Church of the Holy Communion in New York City. The sisters were hev heavily involved in the operation of clinics and care facilities, which would become St. Luke's Hospital in the city of New York, and Harriet served as a nurse. Over time, however, she and other sisters began to yearn for a more traditionally monastic form of their religious life. When agreement could not be reached with the Sisters of the Holy Communion, a small group of them discerned a call to begin a new order. On the Feast of the Presentation, oh, one of my favorites, February 2nd, that's Candlemas, 1865, Bishop Horatio Potter of the Diocese of New York received from Harriet Cannon and her sisters the traditional monastic vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience at St. Michael's Church in Manhattan. The sisters began life together as the community of St. Mary, and Harriet became the community's first superior. The apostolate of the community of St. Mary began with nursing and the care of women who had endured difficult circumstances. After a time, however, the sisters became increasingly committed to providing schools for the education of young women in addition to their medical work. The community continued to grow and developed schools for girls, hospitals, and orphanages in New York, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. They continue their ministries to this day in Greenwich, New York, Swanee, Tennessee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Luinga, Malawi. Mother Harriet died on April 5th, 1896 in Peekskill, New York. Um, those who know me well or who watch these videos follow along with me on Thursdays will know you're going to have to stop me <laughs> talking about Harriet. Um, I find her witness incredibly um, inspiring and life-giving. Um, there are several things that are uh, important to me about Harriet. I'll sort of start later and work back up. Um, I love that her, the, the community of St. Mary um, valued women's safety and health and thriving in the world and that they were committed um, to those projects. Um, I think it's said in here, the community of St. Mary began with nursing and the care of women who had endured difficult circumstances. So I think that we can um, infer from that description that they were caring for women who had been in abusive relationships, perhaps women who were pregnant out of wedlock, um, women who had had um, abortions, particularly negative abortion experiences that were dangerous for their, for their own health. Um, and so uh, that's a noble and beautiful cause, and that work is still vital and um, and underutilized today. So we're um, so we could say a little that they were ahead of their time in that work, but it's probably more that we are behind the times in that work. Um, but uh, which is in, that's an incredible witness um, that we can all take a lesson from. But I think backing up even further, something that that stands out to me um, in Harriet's life of devotion to women um, is that not only did she care for women, um, women for whom women 
whom society society had neglected, um, women um, whose um, medical needs were frowned upon, um, women whose education was not valued. Um, but she also, uh, just in her very being, um, the way that she that she um, sort of lived her monastic life, I think also was a testament to her um, lifting up of women um, in important ways that are often overlooked by society. Um, so the fact that they began their order on Candlemas um, when um, Mary presented her son in the temple um, and the fact that they named their order after St. Mary um, and the fact that um, part of the foundation of their order was that they sought more than just women's laboring, um, nursing, etc. They also craved a more traditionally monastic life. They craved the freedom to express their spirituality faithfully and to have um, full private, quiet relationships with Christ. Um, and, and in all of those, to me, there is a pattern of um, Harriet, Harriet and her sisters recognizing the ways that um, women's physical and emotional labor is taken for granted in our society. Um, and that in caring for the caring for the needs of others exhausts women and they crave um, freedom to devote their time to the Lord, just like the men that they care for are able to do. Um, and so, uh, and that is beautiful to me that they said, uh, we, we know our work is noble, um, but what we crave is not nobility, um, but a spiritual encounter with the Lord. And, and so we're going to prioritize that. And I think that's beautiful and incredible. Um, and I, I hope that women today are inspired by that. I also think that they, um, that they gave throughout their lives, gave special attention to women whose labor, physical and emotional labor was perhaps, um, taken for granted. Uh, it's something that I feel strongly about the Virgin Mary. Uh, I think that, we praise her often for the hardships that she endured um, and, and not enough for the fact that she like sort of willingly accepted that life. And, you know, perhaps the Virgin Mary also craved a quiet spiritual encounter with God, but instead she um, accepted a call to hardship um, physical and emotional hardship and, um, that was noble. Um, but you know, nobility is not all there is w women want more. And so, uh, and the fact that they, um, cared for women, um, who had the weight of the world on their shoulders and were denied, um, opportunities based on perhaps their own actions, uh, perhaps just the fact that they were um, women in the world. So I, I think that, um, you know, one of the best lines in Jane uh, Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, it's my um, fourth favorite book ever written, Um the first sentence of chapter two is, um, I resisted all the way. And uh, I like to say that, you know, um, nevertheless, she persisted has been sort of like a rallying cry for women in the past few years. Um, and I like to take it, take it back to the Bronte sisters and say, I resisted all the way. Um, and I think Harriet Star Cannon resisted all the way. 
in tiny ways, in subtle ways, in ways I didn't notice until today. Um, she resisted the plight of women to be beings of physical and emotional labor um, and to sacrifice their own callings for that noble work. And uh, Harriet Starkhannon said, no, no, we will listen to Christ. Uh, we will listen to God's call in our lives and we will respond with faithful discernment, um, whether it's noble or not, and whether the, the world um, recognizes our rights or not. Um, and so how lovely. Um, what a great feminist Harriet Starkhannon is. Okay, um, we will continue our service of New Day Prayers with the prayers on page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Gracious God, who called Harriet Star Cannon and her companions to revive the monastic vocation in the Episcopal Church and to dedicate their lives to you, grant that we, after their example, may ever surrender ourselves to the revelation of your holy will through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, silently or aloud. Here at Christ Church, we pray for Morgan, Francis and Bob, Scott, Tina, Rad, Van, Leslie, Celeste, Alan. And we pray for the repose of the soul of Linda Cunningham. O, mer o merciful Father, who has taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve your children, look with pity upon the joys and sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered. Remember us, O Lord, in mercy, nourish our souls with patience, comfort us with a sense of your goodness, lift up your countenance upon us, and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. A delight to be with you as always. And I hope to see many of you uh, many times in the coming days. Our um, celebration of Holy Week begins this Sunday. Um, you can go to our website, ChristChurchLR.org, and click on the Holy Week and Easter tab to see a full schedule of our services. Um, that page also indicates which services will be live streamed. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to call us. Um, and a I, we will not be together next Thursday uh, on um, for noonday prayer because we have a variety of Maundy Thursday services that day. Um, we'll be back the following Thursday after Easter. Um, and I, I hope to see many of you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.